Charging is now complete. The test will commence in four seconds. Three, two, one, we're underway. The cameras used by the IIHS are, of course, specialized to capture motion. Capturing motion means capturing many frames per second. Now, where your video camera may capture 30 or 60 frames a second, these guys do hundreds to thousands of frames a second. Here are the onboard digital cameras that we're going to be mounting on the door. Inside the car, they use the IDT NX series, compact cameras. They also capture up to 730 frames a second, our 4 megapixel, which is ample because it matters more how many frames they capture rather than how huge each one is. It's ruggedized so it can take the uh, impact of the crash. This one will be looking at the driver dummy to see how he interacts with the steering wheel, the airbags, and what's happening during the crash. I'm draining all the fluids out of the vehicle. That way we don't make a mess right after the crash. Mounting a camera like this is key. The technicians install the base as a rigid part of the car's body. I mean, they really install it. And of course, they can use a bunch of fasteners because this car is not going back on the market. Those IDT cameras can take up to 200 Gs in a hit. And I'm always amazed how steady they are, even at the moment of impact. The cameras outside the car are even more impressive. Phantom Flex imagers. They're capable of nearly 2,600 frames a second at 1080 resolution. Put another way, they have 32 gigabytes of internal memory and can fill that in 5.1 seconds. For each test, we have a set of predetermined positions for all of our digital imagers. We want to make sure we're getting the exact same shot that we got the last time we ran this test so we can compare vehicle to vehicle if we need to, but it also makes sure that we're consistent with all the footage that we get. Now, all of this, of course, is massively lit by a robotic light grid that ensures even lighting and virtually no shadows because that might obscure any small detail of how the car's components deform. After the actual impact, high-resolution stills are also captured using, rather surprisingly, a Hasselblad medium-format film camera body harnessed to a Phase 1 digital back. After the test, we move the car to the photo studio where there's a large overhead light box and a fully programmable light control board, as well as a seamless background and a turntable that sits on air casters. That allows us to lift the car up and spin it to any position that we wish. Finally, the center uses a DaVinci Resolve edit controller and color corrector to put the footage together and dial in the accuracy of its look. It pays to double check what the IIHS learns from this interesting process.